Ma, you need to take your multivitamins. There's often many different ways to create an automation. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the good practices and some of the bad practices when creating automations, and then show you some in Home Assistant. There's probably a lot of this that you know already, but it's always a good reminder, and over time, your automations tend to get quite messy. It's also down to personal preference a little, and it depends on the situation and what automation you're actually doing. I'm sure that some of the points you'll agree with and others you won't. Firstly, I'm going to discuss some of the things that actually make a good automation. So in my opinion, that is reliability, it happening when you expect it to happen, and also ideally, it's completely fully automated. So firstly, let's talk about it happening when you expect it to happen. So you want an automation to happen in a timely manner. You don't want to walk into a room, for example, and it take three seconds for the light to turn on. This is long enough for it to be jarring and irritating, and if you've got visitors, they're going to start searching for a light switch. The next one is reliability. It's similar to the previous one, but it's more about actually having consistency and reliability within your networks. So for example, your Wi-Fi and your Zigbee networks. You don't want intermittent Wi-Fi or Zigbee issues making it a lottery as to whether your automations are going to work or not. Sadly, some all-in-one Wi-Fi routers are not too reliable when you get past 15 or 20 devices or so. But thankfully, a lot more households are starting to have more devices, so hopefully routers will start to catch up. One way of tackling this is by having a Zigbee coordinator, because you can have one Zigbee coordinator that will be plugged into your network, ideally wired, and then that will do all the communication with your other devices so that it doesn't overwhelm your router. Another way of tackling it is upgrading your Wi-Fi network, but this is actually easier said than done. A lot of people, it's a cost constraint, but also it's a technical constraint. It can be quite complicated setting up a prosumer setup. If you go for a more professional Wi-Fi setup, then it can be good long term, but it can take a lot of time to actually get there and you can have teething issues. There's a lot of settings to navigate and with multiple access points, you can actually end up having worse Wi-Fi for the first month or two until you fine tune the system. And finally, the holy grail is true automation where things just happen on their own. But to achieve this, you do need a lot of different types of sensors. You need presence sensors, motion sensors, GPS location tracking, and lots more. But you can build this up over time. If you take water in a plant, for example, on a basic level, you could set up a reminder so that every three days or so, it sends you a notification to your phone and says that you need to water the plant. However, if you want to fully automate this, you need to go quite a bit further. You would need to have sensors that measure the conductivity and moisture of the soil, and then you would want to have temperature sensors to measure the temperature of the environment, and then you'd want to have a look sensor to measure the light intensity going to the plant, and then of course you actually want to have a water reservoir and a pump so that you feed the right amount of water at the right times. The first automation I'm going to show you is my multivitamins reminder. You could have a reminder each morning at say 9 a.m. that tells you to take multivitamins, but the thing is, is what if you're still in bed or if you've left the house already? Then that reminder is not very useful. So this is what I do instead. The key here is, is being told at the right time. I've got my multivitamins in the lounge and I know that I will go in the lounge at some point every day. So by having a reminder when I go into the lounge is the perfect time to be reminded. So I've got three triggers for this automation. The important one that we're going to start with is the third one. So basically, when presence is detected in the lounge, then the reminder will go off. So we've got a presence sensor. When it goes from off to on, then it will trigger. And then if we look at the actions, so we'll look at this third one here. When it's triggered by the lounge presence, which is this one here, then it's going to check to make sure it's after eight 45 in the morning, otherwise it's probably not me, it's probably the missus. It's going to make sure that I'm home, so that say if it is just my partner that's home and I'm not home, there's no point reminding me if I'm not home. And it's also going to check to see whether I've already taken them for the day. So this is where I've got a helper which gets set when I've already taken them. So we'll see that in more detail in a moment. And then it plays the reminder through the Google Home in our lounge. So now looking at the first trigger, you can see here, 
What I've got here is, is I've actually got a vibration sensor on the top of the multivitamins part, and then it detects if there's vibration on that part. So if a vibration is detected on the multivitamins part, then the action here will be run. So it's triggered by this. It will check to make sure I'm home, to make sure it's me, otherwise it's probably an accident. And then it will set this input Boolean helper to turn it on. So basically it will say, yep, the multivitamins have been taken for the day. And then it won't remind next time you go in the lounge. The trigger in the middle here at 4 a.m. is just to reset that helper. So basically at 4 in the morning, if we have a look down here, 4 in the morning, when that's triggered, it will turn this Boolean off again so that when I go into the lounge in the morning, it will then remind me again. One part of this automation which isn't ideal is it doesn't know whether it's me or someone else in the house that has gone into the lounge. But at the moment there's no way of knowing whether it's me or someone else, so unfortunately we just have to live with that. But in theory I should be taking my multivitamins as soon as possible in the morning when I go in the lounge, so it shouldn't be a problem. Here are a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So the first one is starting simple. Try and keep the automations as simple as possible. And then as you find use cases where it doesn't quite work as desired, you can always make them a bit more complicated, add a few more triggers, conditions or actions as you go along. Your household should be fairly understanding as long as you refine them fairly quickly. And the next one we've already slightly touched on, and that is using sensor information and triggers as much as possible for your automations rather than just using schedules, because that way the automations will happen when you want them rather than just assuming that the person will be in the right place at the right time. An example of this is a Google announcement. Say if you've got an announcement that's for a specific person in the house that goes off, then there's no point in it going off if they're not home. So make sure you use the sensor information available to ensure that things only go off when people are actually around, so you don't irritate the rest of your household with messages that aren't relevant to them. When you think of automations in this way, it really helps you approach the problem in the right way for your specific situation. So as an example, in our house, we've got a house alarm which is controlled by Home Assistant. So you might think, okay, we want a house alarm, therefore we need some door and window sensors and we need a control panel. But instead you could think of it, well, what do we want the house alarm to do? Well, we want to know if someone's trying to break into our house when we're either not home or if we're in bed. So what I've done instead is I use sensors to determine whether we're home or not or whether we're in bed or not at night. And then the alarm can turn on and off automatically and we have no need for a control panel. Now, of course, this is not necessarily useful for everyone. If you've got lots of children or you've got dog sitters, etc., then this probably wouldn't work. But that's the great thing about automations. You can configure them what's good for your lifestyle. A couple of things I did want to show you in Home Assistant to help you create your automations properly are the change mode that you can see up here, for example. So if you click this, then you can see that the single mode, restart, queued and parallel Single mode is whereby the automation can only run once at a time. So if the automation's already running and gets triggered again, then it needs to complete first and it won't happen again. Restart is whereby, say if it's halfway through an automation waiting for something and then another trigger occurs, it will restart the automation from the beginning. Queued is whereby it will finish running the current execution of the automation until it starts the next one. And then parallel is whereby it can run multiple times at once. So say if some movement is detected, for example, and it starts running and then movement's detected again, it will start another instance of that automation at the same time as the other one. So if movement from the lounge, for example, turns a certain light on and movement from the dining room turns another light on, then they might be in the same automation and you need them both to run in parallel. So another useful thing is knowing that you can have trigger IDs. So if I do add trigger, let's do any old trigger, and then click the three dots here, then you can see edit ID. This allows you to add a trigger ID here. If we use if then, for example, then this allows you to create an action with a condition. And then with the condition, you can actually do triggered by. And then under triggered by, you can select which trigger it was that started the automation. So this allows you to combine multiple things into one automation rather than having lots of different automations that do similar things. Similar to the if then action, where it lets you do a condition and then an action, you've also got choose, whereby you can have multiple conditions and actions as many times as you want. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this short video. The purpose of this one wasn't necessarily to teach you anything really new, but just to get you thinking a bit more about how you create your automations. So once again, I hope you enjoyed it, and please comment down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So thanks, until next time. <laughs>